Yeah. Next time, our sister uh, Seni will also translate it in Tagalog. Father <laughs> God, hallelujah. So, uh, uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Nice to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, also, we just want to welcome Sister Mila here this morning and uh, our guest speaker, Mr. Uh, Ken. Uh, before we, uh, uh, again, we have one more thing to do. Uh, before we kind of go to the word uh, this morning, uh, uh, I'm just encouraging everybody to write down your prayer requests because the prayer team are really serious praying for the concern of the uh, beloved. Amen. And also, aside that, also I'm praying for that uh, in the morning. Uh, we have a couple here that uh, want to uh, testify about the goodness of the Lord. And they've been here for a while, and uh, they are so grateful and thankful to be a part of the fellowship uh, here in our church. And let me just call uh, Sister Tina and Brother Bruce here. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning to all. Good morning. Uh, this is Tina and I'm Bruce. <laughs> glory be to God. And uh, praise and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. We asked, we asked uh, Pastor Ernie to actually last week and the message that he had for us, uh, it turned out quite nicely because it was very relevant to the situation that uh, Tina's mother, uh, Mommy Lily, um, encountered a, a health crisis. She had she she had a stroke last week. Um, in fact, she she turned 96 last month, wow. but then uh, had a stroke just last week. And uh, we just wanted to share and 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 and, and thank. The church and thank the Lord for for, um, for answering prayers, um, and we believe in the power of prayer. And we would like to just give God the glory for for what's been happening to him, to her. And the Bruce would like to expound this for sure. Okay, the, the word last week had seven significant messages for us all. Number one is to know your God. Number two, the need will supply. According to his promise, number three, true riches come from God. Number four, storage of riches are in his glory. Number five, Jesus is the Lord of glory. Number six, give back what God has given. And number seven, be a channel to others of God's blessings. Amen. Now all these are very relevant to Mommy Lily. Mind you, she's 96 years old. She's experienced way much more than any of us could hope to experience, mm -hmm. other than Nana, of course. Um, none of us is close to her experience in her walk in the Lord. To know her is to understand what she's been able to accomplish in her lifetime. Her walk with the Lord yeah. is um, very powerful. She founded. <clears throat> Um, a mission, or it's a day spring commission. If you, you're interested, look it up. It's on the web. Day spring commission is an organization that supports pastors in the Philippines, as far reaching as those that have been abandoned for generations up in the mountains, in Mount Bata, in the mountain in the mountain province. Um, and in Zambales, uh, she support, she encouraged uh, the community of uh, believers to support these people who are in, they're indigenous Filipinos. Okay, they're uh, mountain province people, the Itas. You know the Itas. They're the most discriminated against in the Philippines. Yeah. They don't, they're not rendered any education or any support by the government because they're, they're outliers. <laughs> but God spoke to her. 
and this is what she did. And the value of her life has been phenomenal. And the outreach of Day Spring Commission is out, very outreaching and touches so many people. And our testimony, because of her service to the Lord and her obedience, um, <clears throat> made these things that we, we heard from Pastor Ernie last week come to life. Hey, Mommy. That true riches come from God. And giving back to God what he has given us. But to realize that is not so easy. And to practice it is even harder. But to witness it in someone's life, that they've actually done it. And to say, wow, whatever she's, she's done. It's a great example to us. She is a true disciple of Christ. Okay? Discipleship is not simple. The challenge becomes real once you accept him. Yes. Now, as, he, as she has accepted him without any <clears throat> reservation, she's experiencing a challenge and a, a crisis in her life. Yeah. When you have a stroke, you have to, it's, it, you're lucky to even survive it. But she did. And because of your prayers, and we're very thankful for them, she's worked back. She's gained strength. She's eating. She's going through a physical therapy. When she underwent the crisis, the whole family, it's, it's a huge clan in, in Northern California. They all got together. It was like ripple, uh, like a tsunami of people that came to the hospital. And uh, because of that support, everyone got together and the doctor said, well, you know, she's going to have to have, what is it, uh, go, go to, you got to put her in a home because she's not going to be able to uh, do this on her own. And everyone said, oh, no, we're not, we're taking care of Mommy Lily. All of us are going to come together, pull all our resources. You know how hard things are these days if you don't have the money. But they took the challenge. But what was wonderful is the moment she, her needs were realized that she needed uh, physical therapy right after that stroke. And they said, wow, well, how are we going to be able to afford this? You know? uh, God answered the prayer almost immediately. There was a physical therapy center that was, was uh, had a long waiting list. But God said, no, put her in the front of the line. She gets it now, today, and at no cost. Because God loves her and loves us all. You have to all realize that once we do our part as disciples of God, he will answer our need without hesitation. And to have a family such as you, we are so grateful for that and that you've helped us. And as we reach out and ask for prayer, and you so generously give it without hesitation. We have many thanks also because we had, what, uh, I'm sorry, I, I get really emotional. Uh, we had prayer requests last week that really are from the bottom of our heart. We've got people in the Philippines who are barely holding on. They need your prayers. They need the community of faithful to reach out to God as the healer and the doctor. And we ask, and we also thank you so much for all of your prayers. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I believe that's a good uh, testimony. And also they actually decided to uh, to be a part of the uh, Jesus Redeemer Church. Amen. Hallelujah. So, glory to God. Uh, you know, the uh, the mission 
will become a great commission when the people of God united in spreading the gospel. Amen. Uh, it doesn't matter how much actually it costs. We have people here actually in this church that are really into it to uh, support the mission and we are so grateful and thankful about that. You know, this life is about accomplishment. That we accomplish something in our lifetime. I'm going to read a word after the preaching this morning. Uh, but uh, how, uh, how many among you here remember Pastor June Rodrigo? Yes. Yeah, he actually preached here once a year. And uh, uh, I just talked to him and he told me about uh, our speaker today. I, this is the first time I met him. Uh, it looked like he got the, really the anointing of the Lord to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we just want to uh, put, uh, put this one in the PowerPoint you know, about uh, his ministry in the Philippines. So we, uh, we can know him through, this, uh, his, uh, you know, through, through these pictures. Okay, uh, Brother John, can you, can you, can you talk to him about uh, the, the pictures here so you know that they well? Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, that's me, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I am the first, uh, I am the pastor of the first Eastside Baptist Church. Uh, we are located in Mindanao, if you know, uh, in Bukidnon, central Bukidnon. So uh, it's, it's martial law during this time, but uh, it's pretty p peaceful in our place. Um, that's the name of our church, First Eastside Baptist Church. This is during one of the, our, our Sundays there. Um, this is the congregation. Everyone on one of the Sundays, if, as you will notice, a lot of them are children, young people. So 70% of the church are young people and 30% are uh, adults. So uh, these are our, our children in our ch child care learning center with the teachers and their parents at the back. On the next picture, this is their feeding uh, program. So every now and then we, uh, there are missionaries uh, from, uh, from America who, who provide uh, the, the fund for their feeding, so uh, uh, the, the children benefited from them. Not only the children on, on the school, but also to the other schools. Huh? So they, they, do, they do it every uh, month, once in every month. So uh, this, uh, this is our uh, church building. Um, that's, not, uh, that's done, apparently. And uh, we are now building another building um, for the child care learning center and we probably would have to switch the the building this will be the church building later on if this will be done so th those buildings are the fruit of the uh the donations from the from different churches in america so we would like to thank every 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 pastors every uh members of different churches here uh especially uh to the to the missionary that we have who is working for us here um, Pastor Jun Rodriguez and Pastor Ronnie Gentry in uh, North Carolina. So um, we had we had feeding programs, uh, bundle of joy, um, uh, uh, ministry for for children and everything. Also, we encourage and we do as uh, uh, often the reaching of uh, uh, the souls uh, outside using our uh, the young people. So every Sunday we go out, reach 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 some souls. And, um, uh, is there a picture of the pastors on the bottom? Yeah. yeah these, are uh, these are the pastors. Well, um, in the Philippines for Christ ministry, uh, we have uh, 35 pa pastors. 13, pa 13 pastors are from the uh, from uh, Bukidnon, in our place. And I'm one of the pastors right there. Um, I am the coordinator in, the, in Bukidnon, uh, together with my mom. That's my uh, associate pastor right there. So... These pastors are being supported by Philippines for Christ Ministry, and uh, as we know, some of the pastors live in the the mountains. You know, uh, they're not even passable with a with a ride or a motorcycle, so it's very hard. So uh, you can imagine the situation, especially in Bukidnon, where where there are a lot of remote places, poor poor uh, status of living. So you know. Um, we are very thankful for the Philippines for Christ ministry and everyone. We, we, we cannot uh, tell um, each and every one of the churches who have helped, but um, I believe your church has helped also through the effort of uh, Pastor Ernie and Pastor John, 
and everyone, thank you so much. Uh, we have uh, our youth fellowship visitation youth camp. See, they are uh, crossing the river just to read some songs. <laughs> Thanksgiving program, and uh, yeah, the the Lord has been doing good in our church. I've been pastoring the church for uh, four years. I'll be telling more about that about my life later. Um, uh, pastoring for four years, I I taken over the church after my father went to the Lord. He's been coming in the United States before, and um, he, he met a lot of uh, uh, pastors and uh, brothers and sisters in Christ here. So um, during his, his stay here, uh, the church benefited, the other churches benefited. Actually, the Philippines for Christ ministry is, is he founded this one. He founded this one, and then, and uh, uh, Pastor Jun adopted it since he is here. Since he is uh, he is here and he he is able to to go to churches and preach the word of God and he is also uh, um, supporting other pastors in Manila, so so he said why not include the pastors that you have uh, you have a uh, grouped together in Bukidnon so that's why we, we now have the Philippines for Christ Ministry yeah. and we can uh, we we are very grateful for what God has been doing in our lives. Lord, you know when I always use the word "be a part of the end time harvest." Right now, uh, you know the the Bible declares in Matthew twenty four, verse number fourteen, and this word will be preached to all the world, and then the end will come. So, you know, even though we are a small church, I'm praying that we can continue to be a part of this end time harvest. So those people that actually in the very, uh, you know, uh, very part, very part, part of the Philippines will hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what will give the church an excitement when the people experience the power of, of a Christ salvation. Amen. That's why our preaching nowadays are, uh, are, are, are connected to one another. What's our, uh, our topic last Friday, Pastor John? Temptation of self-focus. Not only to self-focus. And uh, 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 brother uh, John Sadra uh, this last uh, yesterday about Papa Oh my help. How did you call it in English? <laughs> you know, you need to love your 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 your, your, uh, your uh, neighbor. Man. Love your neighbor. Your neighbor. Praise God. So this morning, let's go first to the word, and then uh, we will uh, we can continue later. So let's welcome Pastor Kim. Praise the Lord. Oh, sing guitar. Oh, go, go ahead. Are you want to the guitar? Yes. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Pastor Kem Eli Arcojada, just call me Kem because my, my surname is a little bit hard to, to remember. <laughs> Pastor Kem Arcojada, my mother is right here. Uh, please stand up so that they will know you. My mother has my sister and dad with her niece, with her pretty niece sleeping, I guess. So I would like to thank uh, Pastor Jun Rodrigo for introducing me to Pastor Ernie, um, uh, to uh, Mom, Mamila, uh, Tita Mila, of course. Um, for the fellowship last time and for taking care of my father you know my father has been sick here when the last time the last time he came he came here for uh, six months uh, go, went through through uh, chemotherapy and radi radiation went back to the Philippines and after six months God went uh, he went to the Lord 
So that's that's his um, life story. But uh, you know, uh, life of a pastor, life of a minister, and life of a servant of God is very hard. It's not that easy. You know, uh, you will lack um, different uh, material things, financial things, but we do not lack uh, God's provision. Amen. Yeah? Amen. Uh, if it, the, the song that I will be singing to you is uh, entitled "Though You Slay Me." If you can remember the life of Job, the life of Job is very hard. You know? God took him everything, everything, his wife, his children, his, his, his possessions. But what Job does, he did not question God. He did not uh, curse God or anything, do anything uh, that, that won't please God. Instead, he thanked God. He recognized God. And, you know, maybe if Job... It, it is not said, said it did not the Bible said did not say that that Job said God is good all the time but indeed God is good all the time amen, amen. amen. okay so um, I will sing to you the song though you slay me
morning once again. God is good. Another time. God is good. Uh, let's open our Bibles to First uh, Thessalonians five eighteen. It's really a pleasure, pleasure for me to come here and uh, visit your church and see your lovely faces. And uh, most importantly, to speak the word of God in front of you. Amen. It's always a privilege to serve God. It's always a privilege. You know, not all the people in the world have the opportunity to serve God. Have the opportunity to read the Bible. Amen. But we are blessed that we are here today. We can uh, hear the word of God, read the Bible, and have fellowship with each other. First Thessalonians 5.18 It says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you this morning, Lord. Thank you for bringing everyone here safe and sound. Thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness. Thank you for uh, all your provision and all that you have done to our lives. We are asking now, humbly, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, be in our midst. Um, guide us. Uh, uh, give us knowledge and wisdom to understand your word. And may your word empower us, encourage us, and give us uh, the, 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 uh, the excitement in serving you, Lord. Put the right words in your servant today. May your word be a blessing to everyone. Guide us, Lord, we recognize without you we can do nothing. So we commit everything to you. In Christ's precious name, amen. amen. Today... We will be learning about the three things that we are we have to be thankful for. Um, we live in a, uh, not quite a remote area in Bukid Don, but uh, as, uh, if we will uh, imagine Mindanao, it's like like the, the uh, status of living is uh, quite uh, the average, or not you know not that high. A lot of poor, you know so. Um, when I was a child, my father was already a pastor, so uh, he's been pressing to, to, to different churches, and uh, we went from one church to another church, maybe uh, a, couple of, a couple of years stay in this church, the next, 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 next year or, or a few years go to the next church, that's the life of the pastor. I believe Pastor Ernie can relate to that, <laughs> some of the pastors, you know? But, uh, that time we don't have a house, no. We don't have a house. Um, we we just uh, live behind the church at the parsonage. Uh, so uh, my mother, this uh, from she she is from Zambales. She had no uh, uh, didn't have education when when they when they got married with her father. She didn't uh, have. Uh, an education. So what my father did is uh, while pastoring the church, he drive the Motorola. You know the Motorola. <laughs> so uh, my father is earning uh, uh, roughly 400 to 500 pesos a day driving driving the Motorola. So imagine maybe if you could convert that in dollars, it's uh, uh, four five dollars, four to five dollars a day, and and he's not just relaxing, you know. <laughs> He's, he's, he's driving all day, uh, waking up in the morning at 4 a.m., driving until 8 a.m., 8 p.m., just to make my mom, mom go to school. So uh, God has been good because of the driving the Motorola and the support of God. My mom finished studying and she became a teacher. And that's, what, that's the time we, we began going to school. So... Uh, now I am uh, 31 years old, zero kids, zero wife, <laughs> she's still looking for one, I'm not advertising though. So, uh, so that's, uh, that's our life, uh, a life of a past, uh, pastor, pastor's wife, uh, the life of a minister of Christ is, is hard, you know, but we never laugh if we got God Christ. There are many things in life that we have to be thankful for. You know, I did not 
Uh, I did not uh, expect that I will be able to come to America. In the Philippines, a few months ago, or three, three to four months ago, uh, I'm contented with my life. I'm pastoring the church. I have my uh, photography uh, business. Uh, I am a photographer, by the way, in profession, and uh, so I do it as a sideline, so uh, so that I will not be a burden in the church. <laughs> so uh, uh, I do it while pastoring the church, and uh, I'm contented with my life. I, I, I did not expect, but that I, I I will be coming over with my mother. My sister petitioned my mother to come here. That's a blessing. I've been praying for it. Yeah, because I wanted my mother to 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 experience, uh, you know, luxurious life or a good life. Uh -huh. And uh, I believe in the Philippines, it's very hard to attain that. Uh, concerning that, you don't have a, a good job. You know, he she's a teacher in a, a public school, but you know, you know, life is hard in the Philippines, if if you can imagine. So. Uh, I have I had an invi invitation from the operations in as much by the Compassion Revolution Network in Tennessee. Uh, we participated for two conse consecutive years, so um, they they were grateful. They gave me a, a an invitation and a hotel reservation, everything, and they asked me to preach on one of their sessions. So I, I was glad. So my, my sister, my mother said, okay, you try, try to have an interview in the embassy. And then when, when I went there, I did not even uh, worry about my papers. <laughs> they worry about my papers, they prepared everything for me. Huh? So me, me because, you know, I, I'm happy, I'm contented here. What am I gonna do there, you know? But uh, when I, I did my interview in the U.S. Embassy, it's, you know, God has been good, it's very easy, you know. Um, I just tell what was my purpose, and uh, all in total honesty, you know. Mm. And then, uh, and then the, the consul said, okay, we'll just send your passport to the address you have written. Mm. <laughs> you see? Uh -huh. God has been doing good to our life. You know, when we are in, uh, in during that time, what, when my father is, is going to different churches, to a far place, and we are just riding in a small motor, motorcycle, I'm at the front, my father, my mother, and, and my sister. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Huh? And the, the road there before is not that not 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 easy. Yeah. It's, it's very hard, you know. There's one time, <laughs> very rough road. There's one time my mother is carrying me. My father bumped into a big, uh, you know, stone. Bumped, and my mom threw me away. <laughs> he threw me away to the grasses, you know. And and. and they were they were scared and they then they they went and kept, uh, look look at me at the ground and I was still sleeping. <laughs> That's how uh, how I like to sleep when I was <laughs> I was young. But you know, yeah, God has been good. Um, during that time, we did not imagine that we will reach America. My father didn't even wish he could come here. Didn't imagine, you know. My father is uh, didn't have a good education. Maybe, he, he, did he finish high school? He finished high school but not college, uh, automatic in Bible school. And he studied the Bible school without no support from the, his parents. No, it's, it's very hard. But God has been doing good. We are here now and uh, we are blessed. We are very thankful for that, for what you have done. Yeah. 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 I'm, happy to, I'm happy to see every one of you. And uh, we're blessed with your testimonies, uh, with the dedication of all the members. And, uh, so, there are a lot of things that we have to be thankful for to God. Amen? Amen. They are, there are a lot. Sometimes we, we, we forget. Sometimes if we pray, we forget. You know, every little thing. Sometimes we cannot recognize that it's God's work. Well, there are a lot of things that we have to think 
to be thankful for. Now, we will learn the three things that we have to be thankful for. But, but I believe this will cover everything. Amen. This will cover Amen. everything. Number one, thank God for what He has done. Amen. All my life, I've been thanking God for what He has done. Before, I've been raised as a Christian. My father is a pastor. My mother is a um, uh, churchgoer. I am... Um, you know, I've seen the life of a pastor and I said, when I was young, when I was maybe kindergarten nursery, I said, I want to become a pastor. But when I grew up and became in high school, no, I don't want to be a pastor anymore. <laughs> life is hard. I want to become a programmer. So I studied IT. Yeah. So, uh, but then uh, they wanted me to study in Bible school. I refused. I refused. But later on, later on, uh, year 2013, 2014, before my father died, you know, God has been preparing something for me. He is preparing something for me that, that, that you know, the sign is for is my father is for him to get my father. For him to be to be with God in heaven, you know, just like Jonah, uh, Jonah has been refusing to go to what, where God leads him, but God caught him through a whale uh, and directed him to the exact place. Like that, in my situation, God directed me to His plan through the death of my father. I can't imagine or. Um, I don't know or I can't imagine his, what will be his face if he will be able to see me preaching in front of you, pre preaching in churches. You know? Uh, he must be very proud or... Uh, but it's it's, uh, it's uh, kind of sad because he won't be able to see it. But I know he's very happy in, in the presence of God. He, 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 I believe for every Christian it's our dream to be with the Lord. Serving the Lord. There's no cry, crying out there. There's no... Um, sickness and everything. So we are, we have to be thankful for what He has done because we are sinners saved by grace. Amen. We are forgiven and we are bound to heaven. Amen. And behind that grace that He has given to us, behind that grace is Christ's suffering. You know, God sent His Son to wear the flesh and to suffer just for us. Behind that grace is, is those those cars in the nails from the nails of the cross, from the from the whip, from the enemies, you know, from carrying the cross, it's very heavy, from the, 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 the blood that came across from his face. If you can imagine uh, uh, Jesus' face while carrying the cross to the to the Calvary, you know. I've, I've seen Passion of the Christ and it made me cry. Yeah. I don't know if, if you've seen it, but uh, it, it really made me cry. But the truth is, the reality is not like that. It's more than that. Yeah. Yeah. It's more than that just to save for you and me. And that's for grace. For by grace are you saved through faith. It is the gift of God. Amen. Amen. We don't have to do anything. We did not do anything for us, for God to save us. Huh? We, we do not deserve all of this. But because of the grace of God, huh? He saved us. Amen. He saved us. And we are forgiven. Amen. Every day, every day in our lives, we commit sin. Amen? We commit sin. No one, no one is ex exempted. We commit sin every single day. Right, rent a car, some and then some car would the uh, would the uh, cut 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 on our way. We get angry. We commit sin. Yes. Huh? Sometimes you watch TV. Uh, uh, some you can we can see something. <laughs> we commit sin, you know, because evil days are coming. Yes. Yeah, whatever is in this world, the system of the world is evil, but. Look at the goodness of God. 
the mercy of God. He is forgiving us every single day. He, he, we, are, he, we have been forgiven and we are heaven bound. We cannot deny that. If you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we are all going to heaven. Amen. 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 Now, who among us has met or has received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior here in America? Amen. 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 So the, I can see there are Filipinos. I can see there are uh, several nationalities. Um, what's your na nationality, sir? Uh, the other guy? You? Yeah. yeah. More, huh? More. Nationality. Nationality? American. American? Yeah. Okay. So there are Americans, there are Filipinos. So, you know, God has done some uh, beautiful things, good things to you. For the Filipinos, maybe God, uh, God has been doing good, even even if you have not received Jesus Christ yet. God has been doing good to your life. He has brought you here. He has, has given you work here to live here. Experience America. And He saved you. Imagine that. Amen. He did not just brought you here. Enjoy America. He even saved you. Yes. you know? Imagine God's goodness. He... So, uh, let's be excited. Uh, serving God, excited in uh, serving, uh, going to Sunday, Sunday school, excited in uh, worship service. You know, when you wake up in the morning, you will say, "Oh, thank you, Lord, for a new day. Oh, thank you, Lord, it's 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 Sunday again. I can go to church, uh, worship the Lord, sing praises to Him, magnify Him." Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. We should be excited. You know, yes. I'm not the type of person also that's it, it, that's very emotional or very this very uh, showy. <laughs> but uh, you know, we have to show to everybody that we are happy serving the Lord. Yes. Yeah. People say, "Oh, thank you, Lord." Lord, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know the power of smile? The power of uh, your energy. It will affect everybody. Yes. It will uplift your seatmates. Yeah. You know? yeah. And if you're happy, she will become happy. You know? And everybody's happy serving God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> because the psalmist said, Psalms 121, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. always. And again, I say, Rejoice. Let us be happy. Let us rejoice. Because... We are saved by grace. Amen. We have been forgiven. And He's been forgiving us for every single day. And we are bound to heaven. This Sunday school, this morning, we learned what hell is like. So we should be happy. We are saved from that. Hmm? We, th those those destiny, destination has taken away from us. And our destination, ultimate destination is in heaven. You know, in Luke, 10, 20, it says, the disciples before, the disciples of Jesus Christ, they have uh, given the special power by God to treat the, to treat the, the, the sick, the, 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 the blind, or, or even the snakes and the creatures that will, will come their way. You know, so, so they were happy, they were glad, but God said, do not rejoice on these things. No? In Luke 10, 20, he said, Notwithstanding in this rejoice, not that the Spirit are subject unto you, but rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Amen. Rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Do not rejoice just because, uh, just because you can do something for God. Do not rejoice uh, that you can uh, uh, have a, uh, play, play the instruments, play the guitar, play the... Play, or anything that you can do with all your might. Huh? That's that's not the primary purpose, but we should rejoice because we are saved. Our names are written in heaven. Mm -hmm. And he said, no one can pluck you out in my Father's hands. Amen. Amen. That's a good news. No one can pluck them out of 
our father's hands even if we commit sin if even if we we uh, we, uh have uh, shortcomings god will forgive us and no one will ever pluck us us from uh, our father's hands rejoice because this is the day that the lord has made we will rejoice be happy be glad huh rejoice if your name are written in heaven but if not, patay ka. <laughs> you know patay ka is? Yeah. You're dead. <laughs> so, uh, I hope everyone has accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Say Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Number two. With, uh, number one, we, th uh, we have to thank God for what He has done. Number two, we have to thank God for what He is doing. Amen. No? Lamentations 3, 22 to 23. It is the Lord's mercy that we are not ashamed because His His compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Did you thank God that you woke up this morning? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Did you know that we are eligible to die this morning because of the sin we committed yesterday. Hmm? Because the price of sin is death. But this is a good news. Because it, God's word said, God's mercy, His compassion, feel that they are new every morning. Amazing. It, means, it means if we commit our sin yesterday, huh? God disregards it all and give you a chance to another day. Amen. He's giving us chance every day. Huh? He's giving us another day to correct our mistake, another day to do to do good, another day to to uh, preach to someone else, another day to reach out some souls. You know, yes. so we have to be grateful. We have to be happy for what God is doing in our lives. God's mercy is new every morning. Maybe, you know, life is hard for us. Uh, who will tell me, my life is not hard. It's very easy. <laughs> I think every one of us has problems, have trials, encountered to di different difficulties. Yes? Yes. I believe everyone, no one, no one is exempted. But maybe we will see, Lord, I do not deserve this physical this this ability. I do not deserve this physical problem. I do not deserve this emotional problem. I don't even uh, I don't even uh, deserve this mental problem, emotional problem, or, uh, any problem that we, can, we have in our life. I don't deserve this, Lord. But God is so good. God is good all the time. Amen. Amen. Whatever you're going through, Amen. God is good all the time. Yes. Even if we encounter different struggles, He's still good. And that didn't change. Our God is not a changing God. Mm -hmm. From the beginning of the world until up to now, He did not change. And His mercies are new every morning. Mm -hmm. Life is hard, mm -hmm. but God is good. Yes. Huh? Psalm 61, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Mm -hmm. When we have Christ, we have everything. Even if we have the whole world, we have the richest of the world, but if we do not have Christ, we are nothing. Yes. Thank God for what you have. Thank God. You know, when was the last time that you 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 uh, you thank God for your life? Huh? We should thank God every day. Thank God for your wife. Uh -huh. Don't let your wife pinch you. <laughs> Thank God for your wife. Because your wife cooks you in the morning. Cooks you good food. Cooks for you. <laughs> but not cook you, I'm sorry. <laughs> Be good to your wife or she will cook you. <laughs> no. Thank, thank, Lord, thank you for my wife. I'm sorry, I don't have a wife yet. But Lord, 
Lord, I can imagine my wife right now. Thank you for giving me that wife. <laughs> Please give it to me sooner. <laughs> Thank God for your wife. Because if... Uh, be good to your wife, love your wife. Because if you will not love your wife, your food today will be your food yesterday. Uh, hot, steamy, straight from the oven. <coughs> So you, if you want good food, <laughs> cook very well, so love your wife, appreciate your wife, okay? So, and wife, love your husbands also. Mm. Yeah. If not for your husbands, uh, you won't have money to buy a lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> so love each other, you know? Uh, your, your, your kids are watching and, and if they, they can see their parents loving and watching uh, uh, caring for each other you know it, it, will, it will tighten your relationship as a family yeah. parents love your children there are no perfect children I am a stubborn child <laughs> and I believe you too when you were young <laughs> but, but you know thank God for your children Many of the couples in the world does not have children. They, they, they have to, to um, adopt a child. You know? They have not given one. So thank, thank them. Our children commit mistakes. That's normal. That's normal. That's why the Lord said, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Hmm? You will not say, Okay, son, I brought you to this world. Go up, stand up, do your thing, be good. You can do that. No, they had to be trained. They had to be trained. So thank God for your children. Thank God for your family. Thank God for your family. Uh, my father is, is not with us anymore. Uh, in, in, in our house in the Philippines, it's only me and my mother is living in one house, but but uh, thankfully God has uh, given us my uh, some some students who lived with us and be with us and uh, help us in the ministry. So uh, they 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 support us uh, in the house and in the ministry. So <clears throat> thank you for that. Thank God for your pastor. Huh? Yes, yes. Thank God for your pastor. Because your pastor acknowledges all of your prayers. All of your prayers. The pastor will pray for your prayer every morning, every night. And sometimes when, he, when the pastor prays at night, close his eyes, pray at night, and open his eyes in the morning and say amen. <laughs> That's how long the pastor will pray for you. <laughs> the whole night. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, uh, your pastor, sometimes, sometimes a life of a pastor, you will, you will contact your pastor. Pastor, we have emergency. Come here. Pastor, we need you. Even, even in, in the late at night, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't uh, select which time of day that, that the members will call the pastor, especially in the Philippines, even late at night. Pastor, we have an emergency, come here. What happened? Okay. So, it's very hard. So love your pastor. Thank God for your pastor. Amen. Uh -huh. And share your blessings to your pastor. Also, thank God for your church. God brought you here in this church. I believe there are there are new addition, additions to this church. To God be the glory. Praise God. Huh? Thank you for this church because this church has been teaching you with the word of God. This church have, has been a blessing to your lives. To realize God's goodness. To have fellowship with wonderful people. And to have the avenue to... Be of service to God. Without this church, you won't be able to play the instruments. Without this church, you won't be able to, to raise your hand and sing for God. And be part of the family of God. Be part of the body of Christ. Amen. Thank God for this church. Amen. 
In the Philippines, we have no air condition. We have no. Uh, we have no. We have walls, but we don't have. Um, we call that windows. Yeah. We have roof, but we don't have ceiling. You know. Uh, we have floor, and it, our church is done. As long as we are not under the sun, as long as we are not under the rain, when it rains, the building is done. That's how it is in the Philippines. And we are thankful for that. We are very grateful that we have that building. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And now we are, we are praying for another building. Similar to that one. <laughs> so, here in America, we are very blessed that we have all the all the the resources we need and uh, the abundance we need uh, in 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 the Philippines. I just wear a, a, a thin polo polo shirt, yeah, because I'll be, I'll be sweating around. Here I, I, I'm wearing a coat. <laughs> and there's a yeah, coat and tie. And there's a it, in the Philippines I'll be sweating all over. But here, it's very cold. Even I, I wear two clothes, I'm shaking. <laughs> you know? Yeah. The abundance, the abundance is right here. And that's the goodness of God, you know? Mm -hmm. So we have to thank God that we have, we have, we are experiencing this kind of situation. We have electric fans, but it blows hot air. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, in the Philippines, it, it, the preacher normally preach uh, one hour, two hours, so that the members, when it, it becomes uh, 11.30, 11.45, or 12, started to get... <laughs> because it's starting to be, to, to be hot. And uh, not, not that one, not just that, uh, all the members or the, the congregation would start looking like they're praying. <laughs> Can you imagine that? He has pastor. <laughs> they look like praying. <laughs> but they're not praying, they're sleeping. So, so that's why we encourage our members there. If you agree to the word of God, say Amen. Especially when your, your seatmate is sleeping, say Amen. <laughs> to wake him up. Well, that's a blessing. So thank God for what He is doing. You know, the kids here, the kids here, I can uh, see American uh, kids here. Children. 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 In the room. Oh, okay, in the room. So uh, the kids here did not experience Jollibee every day. <laughs> but in the Philippines, they experienced that. You know what I mean? They're not rich. But they experience Jollibee every day, McDo every day. Why? They sit beside the trash can, and when somebody they throw uh, garbage, they they check if there are leftovers and eat it three times a day. Imagine. So that's that's kind of hard. Kids here did not even experience that. We have to be thankful. Huh? Um, Few pastors, Pastor Jun Rodrigo, brought us to several uh, buffet restaurants. You know, and uh, there are just too many for us. <laughs> uh, in, uh, in the middle of the the, the the eating, it's like we can say, I surrender. <laughs> Because how can we finish all the food, you know? <laughs> the abundance, you know? We don't have that, that in the Philippines. We don't have that. <laughs> and a lot of things. We have to be thankful for what God, for what is God doing in our lives. Number three. I think you know what's number three. Thank God for what He will be doing. Amen. Thank God for what He will be doing. To me. God has done great things in our lives. God has turned you into someone you are today. And God brought you to this church. God molded you. 
molded you, teached you, and He's been molding you up to now for you to become more useful in this ministry, for you to become uh, mature in your spiritual journey with Christ. And that assures you of your future, that God will be doing greater things to your life. I would like to uh, tell you about the life of Peter. Peter failed. You know? Peter failed when he uh, denied Christ three times. He failed. He cried. He said, Ugh. And before that, he said, No, I will not. I will not. Uh, disappoint you my master my lord i will not disappoint you but what happened he failed he denied god jesus christ three times but after that he succeeded he came back as a new person he came back uh this time no fooling around this time uh, uh serious about uh, preaching the gospel serious about following god following the will of god following the great commission and what happened he preached in the mountain and there were 3,000 saved. Like Peter, we failed in our lives. We failed. But through that failure, if we get up, stand up, and get back to God, He will use us in a more unimaginable way. You know? <clears throat> we can be serious in serving God. He preached His word, and there are 3,000 that has been saved in that mountain during that preaching. Isn't that great? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, in the Philippines, we perform um, feeding ministry. The 35 pastors, including in the, the Mindanao, they perform um, feeding ministry. <coughs> We would like to continue that feeding ministry every now and then because there are a lot of kids that are being saved. During that time, that those are 35 churches who participated. Uh, they perform feeding in uh, simultaneously in single day in, in different churches. So there are a lot of uh, children that has been saved. It, uh, according to the the list, it's around 1,400, 500 children. Imagine that, just for the feeding ministry. Uh, we went to uh, Victory Baptist Church with uh, Pastor Johnny McCarthy in uh, North Carolina. Um, he told us a story that uh, he gave $20 to young people, his young people, Huh? And the young people brought another another young people from the outside. He's not he's not been saved, you know. But because he shared his twenty dollars, he was able to bring the 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 other kid to the church, and the and the and the kid accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal savior. Imagine that twenty dollars can save a person's life. And what's a person's life? What's the worth of a person's life? Anything in this world cannot compare, cannot, cannot be as valuable as a person's life. You know? So imagine, $20. In the Philippines, they budgeted only 80 pesos. That's how much? Uh, more than 80, 80, uh, uh, one dollar. <laughs> one dollar, and you can save a child just for the feeding ministry, you know? So that's, that's, that's one of the few uh, avenues that we use to reach out the children. <clears throat> now, I, uh, before I did not want to be a pastor, but God changed my desire. He made me who I am today. He made you who you are today. And let's be excited for what God will be doing for us later on. Amen. Just continue to serve God. Continue to <coughs> suffer with God. Because Pastor Ronnie Gentry said, if we suffer in this world, you are being like Christ. Yeah. Much, much more being like Christ because Christ suffered for us. <clears throat> so, uh, God can use you. God can use your church. We thank you that uh, this church has been a blessing to different 
pastors, different missionaries in the Philippines. No? And uh, some of your members are maybe personally supporting uh, pastors in the Philippines. Uh, thank God for that. Uh, thank you for this church. And uh, thank you for uh, your prayers. Thank you for your prayers. <clears throat> um, uh, God can do great things in your life. Amen. We just have to do the first step. To follow God. To obey His will. Follow the Great Commission. Follow what your pastor pastor wants you to do. Uh, continue the ministry. Support the church. Support your pastor. And God will do the rest. Yes. God will do the rest. Bring much more fruit. <coughs> spiritual fruits. Huh? Spiritual fruits in your life. Because we have to thank God of our life every day. We have our life is a gift from God. Yes. You know? Another day, tomorrow is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. We do not know if, if tomorrow will be still be alive. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, it is a gift from God. And what you do with your life is your gift to God. Mm -hmm. uh, our uh, life, uh, our text says, First Thessalonians 5.18 In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus concerning you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your message this morning. Thank you for uh, all the things that you have done. Thank you for the things that you have been doing to our lives. And thank you for the things that you will do in our lives, Lord. Be glorified in our lives. Be magnified in our lives. Use everyone in a different way. Different things. Use, use us, Lord, and uh, help us to encourage everyone. Help us to be useful in this church and uh, I pray Lord that you uh, you uh, bless the pastor bless this church bless the members of this church that they continue to serve you they continue to reach out more souls outside and, and I pray that your work your ministry here in Roanoke will uh, flourish and will uh, grow and so that uh, you will be glorified uh, you, you will be happy you will be joyful in each and every in every lives of everyone. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share your word. May this be a reminder to, for everyone to thank you and be grateful in everything that happens and comes comes and goes in our life. Thank you, and um, we commit everything to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So uh, we have the message this morning. And, uh, you know, you heard a lot of things happening in the Philippines. You can actually say that uh, to yourself that I'm blessed. I'm so thankful that uh, the Lord is giving His blessing. Sometimes we feel like we are self-pity because look like God is forsaking us. Wherein you can actually count your blessing every day. Think about that uh, how, uh, nobody here in this room experienced to be hungry. <coughs> And that's why sometimes I'm always uh, preaching this. Sometimes we throw food to the trash can. Yeah. Yeah. Where some people are waiting for uh, food so they may be able to eat. Some people, children, they're not able to eat. Hallelujah. I remember, I cannot forget what, uh, forget this uh, uh, story that Pastor just shared to me. That there's actually a missionary that went to the village and they're actually feeding the children. And then all the children are uh, enjoying eating, but there's one child there that uh, just looking for the food. And then uh, the, uh, it actually uh, broke my heart because uh, the, 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 uh, this missionary said, you didn't like, didn't like the food? And the child says, said that, uh, is this food, food all uh, mine? He can't believe that he got a food, big food uh, on his table. Because he never experienced that. So that's why for us people of God, I believe in my heart that uh, we need to think about something that we can be a blessing to other people. Amen. You know, uh, Jesus mentioned a parable about the goat and the sheep. If how many of you remember, uh, you know, in the book of Ma uh, Matthew chapter 25, 31 to verse number 46, and the Lord talked about, you know, that... Uh, that uh, uh, you know, I was hungry and you fed me. 
I was a stranger and you took, uh, took me in. I was sick and you visited me. And I was in, also in prison and you came and visited me. And, the, and, then, and then those people said, that, Lord, when did, when did I, uh, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty or give you a drink? And when, when, when we did uh, see you stranger and take you in and naked and you clothed you? Or when did you uh, sit or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, As surely I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Think about that one. And if you cannot see the, para, the, the, the this uh, passage, both of them, the sheep and the, uh, the goat, are talking, uh, using the word, Lord, when did we see you? The, <laughs> if you cannot uh, read, uh, read about uh, this one and think about this one, Lord, when did we see you? And the, both of them are using the word, Lord, when did we see you? That the, that the God said, and the sheep, Lord said, when did we see you? Both of them are saying, Lord. What does it mean? It means that, you know, uh, a, a person, if you're a Christian, you, you know, you have the burden to support the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you know the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the God, you know, when you hit the, you, you just start it, Meh! But the, the sheep, they are very, they, they are very, very calm. That's why uh, you know the, Jesus was called, uh, also is called the Lamb of God who take away the sin of the world. It's not the goat who take away the sin of the world. You know, it's the Lamb because the Lamb, when they sacrifice, they're just still quiet. The, the the goat, you you hold them. Oh, they're always like, yelling, yeah, man, man, man. They cannot sacrifice the goat. Amen. But think about these people of God. I, uh, I, I believe that today we are being encouraged, you know, to be a part of this end time harvest and do uh, also put your investment in the kingdom of God. Amen. Because always remember that what our speaker said here a long time ago, nobody actually go to the cemetery with a new hole. You cannot bring what you have, what you actually uh, have in this life. Hallelujah. So let's all arise and now uh, we will pray. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We honor you and we give the praise, oh God, this morning. We are so thankful, oh God, that you give us, oh God, the word in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, mm -hmm. verse number 18. That in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in, for us in Christ Jesus. Lord God, there's so much blessing that we can actually see every day. And sometimes we neglect, Lord God, to be thankful. And right now, Lord God, we repent for all of these uh, things, Lord God, sin that we committed unto you, for all, the, all of these shortcomings. God, we are so thankful for what you're doing today and even in the future. And I pray that you will continue, God, to release your bountiful blessing unto us. And may you allow us, O oh God, to be a blessing to other people in the name of Jesus. I, I don't know your situation right now. If you have need, but I'm just telling you, God can supply all of your need. Maybe you're physically ill and you need a healing that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. God can heal you. Hallelujah. Just walk in faith. Believe by faith that Jesus is your provider. Hallelujah. Father, we pray even uh, this morning that you will continue God to anoint all the missionaries all over the world. May you allow them, O oh God, to be strengthened and empowered by your spirit to continue God to do the work in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Uh, Pastor Kim, can you come here in the front and we will just uh, pray for you. Can you stretch your hand in this man that God called to do the work in the kingdom. I'm so thankful and grateful that you answered the calling of the Lord. And your dad is being blessed for having you, that there is a uh, successor in the ministry. Father, we are grateful and thankful that you will continue God to anoint Pastor Kim Lord. And may you give him the courage, may you give him the strength, the boldness, 
and Lord God, the provision to do the work in the kingdom. And we rebuke the spirit of disappointment into his life in the name of Jesus. We rebuke all the work and plans of the enemy into his life in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray, O oh Lord God, we pray this morning, as you've been said, O oh God, in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 12, O oh Lord God, that we need to be strong in the power of your might. Father, we release, O oh Lord God, your strength unto him in the name of Jesus. And may you listen, O oh God, to the cry of his heart, that he may be able, O oh God, to fulfill the calling of the Lord into his life. And even we pray that you will provide, Lord God, a uh, helper for her. Lord God, a uh, co-partner in the ministry that will help her, him, Lord God, for the partners of the gospel. Thank you, Lord God, that uh, uh, he walked by faith and not by sight. And we pray, O oh Lord God, that you will allow him, O oh God, to be blessed continually. Bless, Lord God, uh, uh, his mom and Lord God and uh, sister and the entire household. And we pray for his church in the Philippines. May you allow, Lord God, the church to continue to be blessed and to prosper in the name of Jesus. And thank you, O oh God, for this time of prayer. I thank you, Lord God, that your word will continue, God, to spread all over the world. And thank you so much, O oh Lord God, that we are going to be a part of this uh, end time harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, even we pray, O oh Lord, that this morning may you bless the congregation. We pray, O oh God, for this coming week. May you continue, God, to bless us, guide us, and allowing us to be in the spirit. And thank you, Lord God, that the best is yet to come in the name, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray that you will protect us, O oh God, for this coming week and allowing us, O oh God, to continue to rejoice and be thankful for what you're doing in our life in Christ's name. Amen and amen. amen. All right, uh, people of God, I, uh, if you've been blessed by the word, when you go out here in this room, I just want to uh, encourage you. I want to challenge you, you know, to, uh, uh, to give a, a, a help for his ministry. If God is talking to you, I'm not pushing you, but uh, if you give something, put something like I, as I uh, seek for the kingdom of the Lord. And Brother Balk, if you can put your, uh, you know, you at the back there, and if you are God is speak, uh, speaking to you, please do that. Obey to the Holy Spirit, and uh, just make if you are making a check, pay to the Jesus the Redeemer Church, and we put it together. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. And uh, don't forget, we have a food in the other room to, uh, to fellowship. Amen. Hallelujah. One, two. Hey, how are you?